Today we will discuss about uh, constipation, uh, a general overview. Constipation is a common digestive complaint, but the causes are quite varied. Infrequently, they are really secondary to another specific uh, etiology. For example, it could be secondary to endocrine problems uh, or due to heavy metal intoxication like uh, lead poisoning. Uh, they may be secondary to central or peripheral or spinal cord system neurological problems and uh, more importantly they could be secondary to obstructive colonic disease so for example uh, left sided colonic cancer or diverticular stricture. More commonly uh, they are uh, a side effect of commonly used drugs uh, if you look into your pharmacology days. You will remember nausea, vomiting, diarrhea and constipation are commonly mentioned uh, side effects of many drugs. But it is important to remember compared to altered bowel habits in the form of uh, diarrhea of a few weeks duration, the same complaint in the form of constipation is mostly idiopathic and often due to some benign conditions like uh, slow transit or functional constipation or constipation predominant irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, both are benign conditions with excellent long-term uh, prognosis. Conceptually, constipation can be viewed as a disordered movement of the stool through the colon or the anorectum. It's more of a patient's impression that uh, the bowel function has been disturbed from their uh, usual normal pattern. But clinically, we should all appreciate that uh, the word constipation means a different uh, reality for different people. For example, um, I have come across people have a daily bowel movement, but still they feel constipated. So normally when we say constipation, we refer to infrequent or less than usual frequent bowel movements. But a patient might have a daily bowel movement, but still they may complain of constipation because they may be not satisfied. In fact, people may go three or four times uh, passing small quantity or uh, too small and too hard to expel and then uh, come with the label of constipation. Also our patients often use the phrase, uh, uh, they are not able to pass motion freely. So that means there is some kind of any obstruction or increased straining or poor satisfaction. Also when they adopt a different posture or uh, introduce uh, maneuvers like digital evacuation to assist defecation, then also they come and uh, mention that they are constipated. So it is very important to uh, spend time and ask the patient to elaborate what they mean by constipation. So if you look at the Bristol stool chart. From type 1 to type 7, the colonic transit time uh, is reduced. So when there is a slow transit, you have uh, more uh, type 1 pellet and uh, 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 bulky sausage like stools. And uh, as you approach type 4, we approach normal stools. So when you mention constipation, then you are more uh, dealing with type 1 to 3 type of stools. As I mentioned, uh, the secondary causes of constipation, uh, even though they form only a minority, the individual conditions are many. So, uh, a clinician needs to have a broad base of uh, a differential diagnosis and uh, quick correlation to pick out uh, those few patients who might come to us with constipation but have a very identifiable uh, secondary etiology. If you look into neurogenic factors, there are uh, peripheral causes like uh, neuropathy and uh, autonomic neuropathy conditions and also central causes including demyelinating and spinal cord injuries and Parkinson's disease patients have uh, constipation and uh, abdominal bloating as a very important uh, part of their symptom complex. So we saw about various endocrine and uh, other conditions including um, heavy metal poisoning, but uh, majority of them are either due to drugs or due to uh, idiopathic conditions. So again drug lists are many, you need to go into prescribed and over the counter and also any uh, native medicines that could uh, be introduced um, for various health reasons 
and if the chronological relationship is there between starting using a new medication prescribed or otherwise and change in bowel habit then it is worth exploring that drawing the agent and see whether the bowel function improves so these are many anticholinergics uh, cation containing agents like iron uh, neurally active agents uh, especially opioids and um, calcium channel blockers like uh, verapamil are uh, quite uh, notorious to cause a significant constipation especially in the elderly so once you uh, look into a minority of secondary causes and uh, more common drug induced um, constipation we are left with a big group of uh, irritable bowel syndrome constipation type and idiopathic or functional constipation so the functional constipation can be again subclassified into normal or slow colonic transit or where the colonic transit is fine but the anorectal evacuation will be uh, at fault called dyssynergic or evacuation disorder so if you look into the idiopathic variety or the so called functional bowel disorder the majority will be a constipation predominant irritable bowel syndrome where pain is a feature if somebody has a pain along with the rom 4 criteria and if the stools are um, type 1 to 3 uh, most of the time then we call it constipation predominant ibs if there is no pain and if they satisfy the other functional bowel disorder with the frequency and hardness and anorectal blockage then we call it a functional constipation without pain and if the defecation disorder is predominantly due to impaired evacuation Uh, especially when you uh, evaluate and then find uh, some anorectal dysfunction then you subclassify as evacuation disorder so uh, of the functional bowel uh, disorders uh, presenting as constipation uh, 75% will be ibs constipation type around 10% each will be uh, normal or slow transit constipation uh, and uh, defecation disorder and another 5% will be overlapping